Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is November 13th, 2022. Howard, are you in San Diego? Where are you, where are you right now? I'm in San Diego. I'm on the run. On the run? Chasing my crypto. <laughs> you probably need to go to Bahama in Argentina for that. <laughs> no, it's it's. Uh, did you follow the story? I mean, you're not that interested in it, but did you follow the story? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean... I'm following the story. It's fascinating. It's just, I mean, it's like a movie, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I'm hearing that Michael Luce has already been following him for six months. Like there's some kind of book being written, which is kind of creepy. If it's true, because Michael Lewis is not a dumb guy. And yeah. so I can't imagine Michael Lewis wouldn't have some inkling of uh, that there was some sort of problem. So it's, it's all kinds of drama. I, I expect this to... And in a much like Enron, this will take, I don't know, years. Um, it's it's weird in the world of, I think this is, the, the, you know, if we think about Twitter, it was around during, you know, the uh, Lehman, uh, the, uh, you know, t Twitter was around, but now it's mainstream where you have, you know, Sam and the employees on Twitter kind of talking about things in real time. Anyways, it's a hard said to people that, I mean, it's just the way he sucked people in, you know, it, 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 both with the technology and the marketing. Uh, and, the, uh, you know, if you really think about, you know, from Major League Baseball to, uh, you know, the stadium um, to the athletes, you know, yeah. um, and more importantly on the technology side, you know, they bought a company called Embed and they built their own, you know, stuff which was connected uh, the pipes so people could trade crypto. So, so all kinds of uh, sites around the world were connected to the pipes of, of uh, FTX. So in the, in the end, it was like, evil and genius in the sense that technology wise he was figuring out a way how to connect everybody to the ftx pipe and the money was just going out uh the back end so it's kind of a, a miracle in many ways that this thing broke down when it did break down <clears throat> it's and, fascinating yeah I mean, it's just i really don't understand that how for some people uh, there's nothing like enough for them <laughs> because you could you know have a billion or five billion dollars and you know in a legal way and you know have a happy prosperous life but um yeah and, well we'll we'll find out there's a lot of emails i'm sure over the last couple of years that will now surface um in hindsight that'll make it look obvious right um but in a world where the big money just didn't put in governance and oversight uh, and in a way where he was skirting regulation in Bahamas, because a lot of people were on to this. Just, I don't think that pe people could have pred predicted the scale. You know, I was listening to Brian Armstrong on the All In podcast talk about, you know, because I've, I've talked to Sam. I've only met him once, but I've talked to Sam on my podcast and he understood the, like, it's not like he didn't understand how the how the sausage was made. He came out of Jane Street, knew how to create ETFs, he knew how money flows work. Obviously, he wasn't a good trader. Period. End of story. Full stop. You know, someone was cleaning his clock every day, probably Binance or other uh, liquidity pools. So he was losing money, right? Like he was, he was busy building a business, not trading, or whoever was trading the aluminum money was not doing a good job. Um, the key is how did he keep it? going so long so that that'll start to unravel you know there's 10 to 20 billion dollars if not more missing um in you know this week we'll start hearing about some more bankruptcies because all these crypto companies have their money on deposit somewhere yeah. what i don't understand because i never did it myself <clears throat> is why you know for months i've been talking about t-bills in cash and i don't know why people thought you know, cash at uh, an unregulated exchange was good. You know, we had people trying to get 15% at Celsius, but like, so the stupidity 
for the greed was everywhere. But what I don't understand is why people will put their hard earned, you know, cash and savings in an unregulated institution. And if you still do have that going on, get, you know, you need to move fast and get your money in an insured, you know, bank or brokerage account in the United States. I just don't understand why people do that. And if you really want to understand crypto, um, the idea is, is to truly own it with the secure key, which is why I never really held it because I don't trust myself, you know, with the storage of it. Um, you know, I made my mistakes. I don't know, as I told you, I've talked about multiple. Some people were swindled. I have my money in some funds and in particular multi-coin. They were, you know, they weren't part of it, but they fell for, um, you know, kind of the same um you know, spell. So there will be some hedge funds as, as we're starting to hear completely wiped out. But, you know, I, I, I think I've been clear, like putting putting your own money in crypto just to, just to trade just uh, seems kind of ridiculous. Um, so it'll, be, it'll take a while. Did you have any money in any of the exchanges? No, not, not right now. I don't have any exposure. Um, and so you think that everyone should keep their money, like use a cold storage, but wouldn't that make Yeah, there's, it? I mean, there's, there's, again, I don't because I've just trusted, I allocated a certain percentage to some managers because I was willing to pay the 2%, uh, as I've talked about, and versus me holding the money and deciding which coins to own. So it's kind of a simple asset allocation. Um, you know, figure out what I'm willing to lose and, and allocate it to the sector. At one point it was a lot of money. And I remember, you know, selling some Solana multi-coin uh, at the end of last year, but we're all hit. Like anybody who had exposure to crypto uh, over the last few months, um, you know, I, there's, if you haven't been hit, get your cash out. Uh, and if you have been hit, get some cash out. And, you know, if you're using exchanges that aren't regulated, um, no, that's just, I mean, been, been clear from the beginning. You're, you're not protected. So, um, so are you saying the worst is still to come just because of the psychological aspect of just people fearing for their money and just basically running out? Yeah. I mean, they're going to they're like Binance is, I think there's like a run on Binance this morning. Uh, again, there's all kinds of rumors, right? Um, but yeah. Uh, you're not, you're just swapping trust from one regulator to another, reg, you know, regular Coinbase is somewhat working with the SEC and regulators. They seem to be winning at the moment. If you look at the inflow, well, define winning, right? Robinhood should win too, the remaining standard, but you know, Sam owned $400 million worth of the stock. So it quickly, 10%, sold yeah. so that's yeah. kind of a proxy to keep an eye on this week. Because I was getting more bullish, as I talked about a few weeks ago here on Robinhood, as being the only game, you know, left in town as interest rates rise and it's hard to compete. It's hard to launch a new Robinhood product, so therefore Robinhood wins on one end. And like I said, Schwab, Goldman and Morgan, and J.P. Morgan have such huge valuations; they don't really worry about uh, where Schwab at uh, 150 billion versus 10 billion for Robinhood. Uh, Schwab's got bigger fish to fry, right? So. Um, this is a big step back for Robin. You can see the volume spike. Now, this could be hedge funds um, plowing in uh, short, knowing that this 400 million uh, piece from Alameda, which is FTX, uh, is, is not accounted for. Like, who's going to own that stock? Uh, but quickly, the stock bounced um, Friday. Uh, so it should be an interesting week. You know, uh, but really scary. Like, when when um, when something like this happens, uh, it's really scary. But you can see, like financials are strong, energy is strong, uh, and and money flowed uh, into tech last week, or or there were short covering. So yeah. tell me what you saw. I mean, so it's like in one hand you had like a crypto uh, nuclear bomb. But in the other hand, the ARC world or the uh, QQQ had a massive yeah. relief rally. You know, they're saying it's based on the CPI. So we'll see if it's a bear market rally or the beginning of something new. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, no one does. Neither the market does. The market is always forward looking and it's just trying to 
to predict the future uh, three to six months ahead. And sometimes it's right, often it's not. So currently we are in the midst, I think, of another bear market rally. Mm -hmm. um, it started, uh, I mean, the big move basically started on Thursday when the CPI, Consumer Price Index, uh, inflation came a just a little bit below expectation. Like it was 7.7 .7 versus 7.9. I think that's a really tiny drop. And the market is already pricing in uh, only a 50 basis point uh, interest rates increase uh, for the December uh, FOMC meetings, December 14th, and not 75. And this was enough to see a massive short squeeze. Uh, definitely Thursday, Friday, the stocks that were hit the worst this year uh, outperformed by a mile. Uh, we're talking about large cap techs like Amazon and, and Shopify or very highly shorted companies that are probably going out of business eventually, like Carvana and um, and Affirm and, and you, like companies that actually last week they missed earnings estimates and their guidance didn't look uh, very encouraging. But because of that wave, short squeeze wave that lifted all boats, they outperformed. Mm -hmm. definitely outperformed uh so th we're in the midst of it and i would not be surprised if we see this run continue uh kind of until the end of the month uh november just see that short squeeze uh, play out maybe s p even go ab above its 200 day for a little bit just to uh lure in some uh, new bulls yeah and i'm i'm thinking that from a strategic point of view it kind of makes sense that like a week or two before the next FOMC meetings, which is December 14th, to start seeing a pullback, a sell-off as the market, just in case, you know, why not take profits uh, ahead of that FOMC because they might actually raise 75. <laughs> we don't know if they raise 50, even that's what the market is currently saying. But yes, you're right. It's um, definitely, no one knows if this is just not a bear market rally or maybe something more. I think it's the former, but I don't know. So I'm just playing it short term. You know, I just take positions. Currently, correlations are relatively high. So it kind of still makes sense to just use an ETF or leverage ETF to get exposure. Mm -hmm. That's what I did on Thursday. I just bought a few of them with the stop low of the day and just gradually taking partial profits in some of the options plays I took. Um, but this is what's going on. And the, the strength is not concentrated in one field. It, it's just... It's almost everywhere and solar kind of pull back ahead of the elections as people were thinking that maybe Congress will turn red. It didn't. And it's been on a tear basically yeah. after after the elections. So yeah. there's some yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Friday they were fake break. Yeah. Out, yeah. A lot of big moves. Uh, the winning stocks kind of pull back. The, what did the defense do? Uh, oh yeah on friday definitely we saw some like stocks that were actually doing well year to date they kind of got hit like yeah events, like L &T, like McDonald's. the consumer staples like yeah there were definitely... risk on, it was more of a risk on rally uh old people were chasing tech which was good yeah. you know, but the question is um yeah, they're still oversold. You know, can Amazon rally another twenty percent? The question is, what would you do if Alice, Amazon rally another? Easily, they can go to one twenty, I think. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so it should be an interesting week, but there's going to be a lot of news. Um, the uh, it's really it's really just a creepy. It's one of the worst weeks that I can remember, even though I'm not heavily exposed to the markets, um, because it's kind of a gut punch. You know, you really see the excesses of of the last 10 years showing up in these weird ways, right? Like it was yeah. venture, you know, people in my industry, venture capitalists, the, oh, it's not so bad, you know, the letters from Sequoia. Um, it was kind of flippant. Uh, you know, Sequoia put out a letter that, oh, you know, we, we've lost 200 million in, in, uh, in F FTX, but we're up 7 billion. You know, so it was more like, this is just normal course of business. That's the way Sequoia announced it. But like months ago, they had a deep dive about why they loved FTX on their website. This is Sequoia, kind of the, the blue chip uh, um, 
blue blood of, of, of venture capital. So this has got, this runs pretty deep um, and it, it, it'll shake, you know, uh, the, 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 it'll shake a lot of things and it'll create a lot of regulation for innocent bystanders, right? That really want to do something on the blockchain because we need innovation, right? Apple's kind of, if we look at Apple, they're, they're stifling innovation while, while the products continue to be amazing. The watch, the phone, um, you know, all their chips. Uh, but the clamp that they have through that phone and, and the watch is pretty amazing. So so uh, you've got that on one end and then you have, you know, blockchain technology, which is really interesting to me around uh, tokens, um, kind of now taking a shot to the belly. And it'll be very hard to get people, you know, to adopt and to take take stuff seriously. So uh, this benefit, I think this benefits tech and that's why tech rallied off this crypto thing. It's kind of, uh, you know, one of the other things besides, you know, the CPI number and the oversold nature of it. So we'll see, it, we'll see if it continues. What, the bio, were the biotech strong, Ivan? Because I know they had kind of- They're, they're starting to recover. I mean, already above the, the 200 day, they close above the 200 day. So it, definitely some potential here. Yeah. And IBB, the large cap, is doing a little bit better, obviously, yeah. thanks to Amgen at all-time highs. Uh, Biogen is also uh, the market, doing work. I'll tell you what, the Dow's not very far from all-time highs. Oh, yeah. 7 8% only. Um, Back above its 200-day. Um, let's see. 8.6%. from And that's without point. Exxon, right? So if, if, exactly. If you had Exxon there or whatever they replaced the stocks, you know, CRM. Down highs. So CRM. it probably would have been at near all time highs with Exxon. Yeah. yeah. So just that simple change with the DAO would be at all time highs. So one of the weirdest bear markets, you know, ever because the industrials are basically at all time high. Um, you know, swapping sales force. You know, they they added tech, you know, right at the wrong time, right as industrials take off. So um so yeah, you have this this really weird market where, and and that just goes to show you guys like me who have been riding a, a tech trend for ten years. When trends end, they're just devastating, no matter how careful you are. And um, but the money does not want to come out of the markets, even with rates at five. So let's take a look at, at it's rates. It's rotating, yes. Yeah. So again, like, and then the dollar, you'd want to see the dollar start craving, which yeah, it started to it do. Is, it is. Yeah. Pretty so, so that was another down reason. week. Yeah, that was another reason. We've been talking about the dollar being strong. This that was a big move down in the dollar for a week, and uh, that might have helped tech stocks as well. So you've got you know companies getting religion; they're letting go of people. Yeah, dollar uh, finally weakening. You have rates. There's a lot of speculation that rates kind of are topping out at least short term here, and um, so so the rally can continue. Just know your levels. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of, Think about repositioning yeah. your portfolio. Where, where are you thinking about it this week, Ivan? I mean, I'm still looking on uh, ideas on the long side, mainly just uh, yeah, playing some of back the... above its 200 here. Yeah, that's why I'm showing you that one of the worst hit sectors, housing, is actually has been leading since Thursday. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was housing and art, all the stocks that were sectors that were hit the worst are leading. So I, mean, I continue to be short-term oriented, just looking at short-term opportunities. Yeah. I'm not really thinking six or 12 months ahead, just making yeah. any longer than like you. I'm like, there is some reason to look more long, like to be engaged here a little bit, but you got to reposition your portfolio too. Uh, like yeah, I, I mean, if fair, you do it long- Tech is a bear market rally for sure. Tech is a bear you, market. You need to do it gradually, even if yeah. you're buying something like Hood, maybe just do it- uh, yeah. monthly or something no no, no. i was buying it for six months back and i didn't yeah. i wasn't as, as bullish as i am a, you know relatively to where they are in the market that that's scary when you see a 30 percent drop yeah you know, in a few days stuff. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's landmine this is a landmine market it is finding your weakness um and what we're seeing with industrial no one owns it right and like you know When's the last time people said, told you their portfolio was allocated to the DAO? Yeah, they're not sexy companies, but uh, they're doing really well. Um, look at Caterpillar, almost near, uh, I mean, it's almost 52 it highs, almost yeah. all time highs. Yeah. So. so, all right, buddy, have a great week. 
Ulrich Howard. See you next week. See you, everybody.